Hi friends, this is Ranjit. Welcome to our course on Katia surface design. So in this, we will be learning surface design workbench that is wireframe and surface design workbench from Katia V5. So in this, we will be looking into different tabs like surfaces, wireframe and operation tab. So in surfaces, we are going to see all the commands like extrude, revolve, sphere, cylinder, offset, sweep, Fill surface, multi section surface, and blend command, along with all the operation command like split, trim, boundary, join, and so on, and the different options that are available inside wireframe toolbar. So, welcome to our course, and we will be also covering several objects like basketball, the in cover bracket all the objects that are shown in this image will be covered from their drawing to a final product and application of material and rendering of all the products so that's all about this course thank you friends hi friends welcome back to the course on katia v5 surface design so in today's session we are going to start introductory lecture about the surface design Okay, so the first group of commands that we are going to see is surfaces. Okay, similar to solid modeling, in surfaces we need to initially create a base surface and after that on that surface we are carrying out a various operation. Okay, for creating a base surface, these are the options that are available inside a Katia view file. Okay, so the first option is extrude. So this command is similar to the pad command that we have found out in a part design workbench. Only difference is in part design we have to create a closed sketch in order to create a 3D model out of it. Instead in a surface we can use open curve or a closed curve to create any feature. So I will tell you the difference between the open sketch and closed sketch. Okay. So before going into this command we have to create a base sketch. Okay. So for creating a base sketch we are again going into this sketch option so i will select this sketch option and i will select any of the plane okay so i will create one close sketch which we have created while creating a pad command okay and after that i will select this extrude command so i will select this extrude command so my sketch will get extruded in a upward direction by 20 mm if you want to increase its height, you can specify the higher value in a dimension tab. If you want to have a similar value in a downward direction, you can choose mirror exchange option. Okay. If you want to have a different value other than this 50 mm in other direction, you can use other value. Okay. So in this way, we can create a surface. Okay. So in case of a part modeling, by using a pad command, it will create a complete solid feature instead of creating a surface like feature. Okay. And in surfaces, it will create a hollow portion instead of complete solid portion. Okay. So this is my close sketch. Okay. So we can use. So by mistakenly, I have created this part modeling inside a product. So I will again go and open this in a new window. Okay. And I will delete this sketch. And I will again go into the sketcher option. And I will create a simple sketch like this one. And I will press exit. Okay. So we can extrude this open sketch also. So in part modeling, we won't be able to extrude this open sketch. So in surface modeling, we can create an extrusion feature. As we all know, for a surface, the thickness of this part is zero initially. Only for visual appearance, it is showing a thin surface. Okay. So this is how we can use an extrude command. Then the next command is revolve command, which is similar to shaft command available inside a part design workbench. 
so again for a revolve command or a shaft command we are, we need to define rotational axis if you if you won't define a rotational axis for this object you can define it by using a 3d compass that is available here okay so i will directly use this revolve option i will select this profile and for revolution axis i know that my axis in a vertical direction is a z axis so i will choose again a z axis okay so in this way it will create a revolve surface if you want to change the angle you can change the angle okay so in this way revolve command works okay then the next command is sphere if you want to clear create a spherical object then this can be created by simply defining any points inside a your user interface so you can specify the points by using coordinate okay or else by using this option or else we can directly create a point inside the feature also so i will directly create a sphere so it will be asking center point of sphere so we will right click on this option and there is an option called as create a point so i will choose create point option so right now i am going to define its coordinate as suppose 50 mm 100 mm and suppose 250 mm so i will create one point by using this coordinates and my sphere will be created at this point okay so this is half sphere we can change its parameter by simply dragging these icons or we can control these parameters at this location so you can you can try this try changing these parameters and find out how the shape define okay and if you want to have a complete sphere then you can choose this option so it will create a whole sphere remember this sphere is hollow part inside it is not a solid part okay so in this way we can use sphere command similar to sphere we can directly create a cylinder okay so again for cylinder we need to define its starting point so again i will go into this cylinder i will click on this create point option by right clicking on that no selection tab and we can again specify the coordinate for that point center point of cylinder then the next point will be to define the direction of our cylinder so we can specify the direction along z direction along x direction along y direction any of the direction so i will choose it as y direction so it will create an orientation of a cylinder along a y direction we can specify different lane direction in a forward or backward direction we can we can change the radius of that cylinder by going into these points okay so in this way we can use a cylindrical surface option okay so again it is an hollow cylinder suppose i want to create a cylinder offset from this base cylinder and the offset distance is 25 mm so in that case we can use this offset tab okay so i will choose this offset tab i will select this cylinder okay and we need to specify the offset distance so i will specify the offset distance as a 25 mm so it will create offset in a outward direction if you want to change the direction no? then you can use this reverse direction option so i will just reduce the value of that offset and we can simply press preview option so we can see the preview of our offsetted surface if you want to have a offset in a both direction we can create offset in both direction by using this both direction option and again we can press a preview option so in this way it will create offset in a both direction okay so in this video we have seen a basic option that is extrude revolve sphere cylinder and offset surface you can create offset of any surface if you want to have it is not mandatory to create a cylindrical surface always suppose if you are having a surface like this one and you have created an off
offset like this one. Okay, you can again create an offset of this kind of surface by using offset command. So you just need to specify the parameter for offset. So it will create an offset of fire. Now I will increase the parameter. So it will be creating an offset in a downward direction. If you want to have it on upward direction, you can choose a reverse direction option and prep. Okay, so in this way we can use an offset command. Okay, try using those commands. Then in next videos, I will define the next options that are available inside the surface. Okay, thank you friends. Hi student, welcome back to the course on Katia V5 surface design. So in this video, we are going to see the next option that are available inside a surfaces. Okay, so the next option that we are going to see is sweep command. This command is similar to the rip command that is available inside a part design. Okay, so again for a sweep command we have to create a path or a center curve. So in this case I will create a path like this one. Okay, and we need to create a plane which is normal to this curve. So for creating that plane we have to select this curve first and we have to specify the starting point. So I will specify this point as a start point and okay. Okay. After that, I will create a sketch which will follow this path curve or center curve. So I will create a circle like this one, and I want to move that circle along this along this path curve. So this can be done by using this sweep command. So I will choose this sweep command option. So again, it will be asking you a profile. So I will select this as my profile. Then it will be asking a guide curve. So I will choose and guide curve. And I will simply press preview option. So in this way, it will create a surface. Okay. So there are other options that are available inside a sweep command. That we will be using while creating an object, okay? And I will choose an OK button, okay? So this is how we can use a sweep command. Suppose if you want to cap this open portion, okay? So if you want to create a closed section, so this can be done by using a fill command. So we can use fill option. I will select this circle so it will be indicating that it is a closed contour and we can press an OK button. So it will be created a cap for a given pipe portion. So that pipe is internally hollow but it has a closed end at close end at this location. Okay, so in this way we can use a fill command. So for fill it is not necessary to have already always a circular portion. We can create a fill for any section. Suppose if I use a hexagon and I will create an extrude out of this hexagon and if you want to close this portion of this hexagonal cylinder then it can be done by using fill command so again we have to choose edges and it should form a closed geometry so it will be showing it is closed contour in that case only it will create a fill surface okay okay so this is all about fill command then the next option is multi section surface so this section this again is a similar to multi section solid that is available inside part design workbench so again we need to create a multiple sketches or a multiple sections at a different on a different plane so i will create a circle again i will choose any plane which is at offset of 100 mm suppose 
so this 100 mm is smaller in size we need to reduce the diameter of this circle so we'll reduce the diameter of this circle okay and i will create one more section at this location that is a rectangular section Again, I will create a new plate. Again, I will create one more section. So, as we all know, for a multi section command to execute, we need to have equal number of points for all the sections. So, we can use a ratio command that is directly available inside a multi section, or else we can create of four different points or break that circle into four different location in order to have a proper connectivity so in my case i will be using this direct multi section surface option you can try using vertices option which is similar to multi section solid so again we have to select the sections again we have to look into this closing point option so for a circle we won't be able to change the closing point so we will be changing the closing point location from this point to this point for a rectangular geometry and we will be using in a coupling we will be using a ratio option and i will select ok button so in this way the software will create a multi section surface Again, we can specify the thickness to this surface also. We can close the one end by using field command and so on. Okay. So, this way, a multi section surface will be worked out. Okay. Then the next portion will be a blend command. Okay. So, blend command is typically used. So, when we want to connect two different sections with end point to end point connectivity so suppose i am having a section like this one okay so i am having one section like this one and i will create one more plane which is offset from this by some specific distance and i will again create one more sketch which is smaller in size and has a different undulation pattern okay so in this way i have created two sketches and if we are extruding these sketches in opposite direction so i will choose a reverse direction i will choose this as a zero and i will reduce the dimension okay suppose i am having this sketch and similarly i am having one more sketch like this one and I will hide the sketches, base, base sketches and we want to connect this edge to this edge. Okay. So we will connect it by a straight line directly from this location to this location. So this can be done by using a blend command. So I will choose this blend command option. Okay. So the first option is we need to select a curve. So I will choose this curve then it will be asking a second curve so i will be choosing this edge as my curve remember you want you have to have this orientation arrow in a similar orientation in order to have a proper connectivity or else this end will connect to this end and this end will connect to this end okay so it will create an abrupt geometry so in order to avoid that we need to see the orientation of this arrow and i will simply press preview button so both the end curves are connected by, by means of a straight line. Suppose you want to connect those two curves by a smooth transition that is by means of tangency connectivity. Okay. So this can be done again by using support. So I will choose for first support I will choose this surface and for second support I will choose this surface and I will again choose preview option. 
so now you can observe that both the edges are connected by means of a comb okay so in this way you can use a blend command okay friends so that's all about the surfaces option that are available inside surfaces okay thank you friends hi friends welcome back to the course on katia v5 surface design so in today's session we are going to see a different option that are available inside an operation tab okay so in earlier case we have seen all the options from a surface tab okay so there is one option that we are going to use almost for every component that is trim or split okay in some sketches we might be using a combination of trim and split depending upon our geometry okay so first find out the difference between the trim and split okay so i will tell you a simple example suppose i am having a one geometry okay like this finger and one more geometry like this finger okay and these two fingers are intersecting to each other and i want to cut this finger that is bottom most finger by means of this this finger okay so if you want to split this bottom finger into two half and you want to have only one half of the finger then in that case we are using a split command suppose like this one so it will create a geometry like this one so it will cut out the portion of this bottom finger in a this direction okay so this will be a split option and the second option is a trim that means we need to cut both the part of a finger by using both the fingers that is suppose i want to cut this finger into two half and remove the upper portion of this finger and similarly i want to cut this finger in a two half and deleting this part of a finger so the geometry will be like this one okay so this is all about a split command and a trim command so we will be just seeing the demonstration of this split and a trim command okay so suppose i am having one geometry like this one so i will create a sketch initially to create a extrude feature so so suppose this is my first sketch i will extrude this sketch in both direction i will reduce the dimension so this is my first sketch i will hide this sketch okay or else i can use the same sketch and i will specify the direction of extrusion in a y direction instead of z direction so i will specify the direction by going into this direction tab and i will specify the orientation in y direction and okay okay and now i am going to add this sketch okay so these two are intersecting geometry and we want to cut this horizontal surface and we want to delete this portion of horizontal surface by using this surface so we will be using a split command so the split command will be this one so it will be asking element to cut that means which element we have to split it into two half okay so i will choose this horizontal surface and it will be asking a cutting element so the cutting element will be this one okay so this light gray color will indicate that this portion of horizontal surface will be deleted okay so we want to delete this this portion of horizontal surface so we can interchange this by going into this other side option so it will keep this portion and it will delete this portion okay and okay so in this way we can split an object and delete one part of that object if you want to have a both part of that surface then in that case we will be using keep both the side and we will be using okay option okay so my this surface will be a different surface and this surface will be a different surface we can identify that there will be a one corner that is 
created at this point that means this surface is a different one and this surface is a different one okay okay so we will be using a graphic property in order to differentiate between the two surfaces so in this way we can identify that both the surfaces are not a same okay again instead of using a split option if i want to cut the this part of vertical surface and this part of horizontal surface that means we are keeping this geometry and this geometry and we will be deleting these two geometries so this can be done again by using trim command okay so i will for simplicity i will define the color to the two geometries okay and i will be again going into this trim option so it will be asking to select trim geometries so i will select this geometry and this geometry so both the geometries are selected right here okay so again there is there are two options for selecting an other side that means first we have selected this vertical surface and secondly we have selected this horizontal surface that means this other side will indicate which side to be cut of vertical surface and this other side will indicate which side of horizontal surface will be deleted and kept okay so i will choose so this portion will be deleted and this portion will be kept okay if you want to change them we can if you want to have this surface to be kept we can use other side so this surface will be kept and if you want to keep this surface again we can use this other side option and okay so in this way we can use trim and split command okay we can use a split command in a different way also so this is my color of this horizontal surface and i will create one more plane offset from this horizontal plane so i will specify the dimension or else i can use a track so i will create this plane and we create one sketch on that plane like this one and if we want to project this plane on that surface this can be done by using a project option which is available inside wireframe option so i will use this projection option i will project this rectangle in a downward direction on a that support so my sketch will be this one projected and my support will be this horizontal surface and i will choose okay button so this rectangle gets projected onto that surface and suppose we want to delete this internal part of this surface so we want to delete only a part of a surface okay so this can be done by using a split command so i will choose split option for element to cut i will select this surface and cutting element will be this projected entity okay so we i will choose an other side option and we will be preview this geometry so it is not showing a preview because of this color so i will use this way okay so this portion will be kept and this portion will be deleted okay so again if you want to have offset of this geometry we can use an offset command okay friends this is all about split and trim and this projection option so in next videos we will be seeing the next option that are available inside operation toolbar thank you friends hi friends so welcome back to the course on katia v5 surface design so in today's session we are going to see some of the options that are available inside an operation toolbar so today we are going to see these two options 
so the first option will be a boundary command okay so suppose i will create one simple sketch so i will create a curve like this one and i will create extrude of this and i will hide this edge and then suppose i want to extract all the edges of this surface okay in order to create a different geometry or for a reference to a different geometry in that case we can use this boundary command okay so it will extract all the edges of the given surface so i will select this boundary command and i will select only this surface so it will automatically select all the edges which are connected by means of point and i will select okay so it will extract all these edges and by using these edges we can create any of the operation so i will extrude this object so my vertical direction will be along y direction so i will choose the direction of extrusion as y so in this way we can create an extrude of an extracted surface okay suppose in some cases if you don't want to create extraction of all the edges you want a specific edge in that case you can use a multiple extract option so i will choose edge this one and i will choose okay so this is only a extract option so this option will only extract a single edge of a given surface suppose you want to have a extract of this edge and this edge inside a single option then in that case you have to go into the start shape and generative shape design option so in generative shape design there is an option called as multiple extract so this option is again available inside an operation toolbar so we need to go into this operation toolbar and again in operation toolbar boundary multi, boundary extract and then there is an option called as multiple extract so i will choose this multiple extract option and i will select multiple edges to be extracted into a single object and we will again extrude this object in direction i will choose y direction i will choose okay okay so in this way we can use a multiple extract option that is available inside generative shape design again i will go into this mechanical design and wireframe and surface design okay suppose in boundary command itself there is an option that can be used to create a multiple extract okay so this can be used like i will select this boundary option and instead of this uh, i will select this surface and instead of selecting all these edges there is an option called as limit 1 and limit 2 so in limit 1 i will select this edge and in limit 2 i will select this edge that means it will either select these two edges or else these two edges okay if you want to change the orientation there is an arrow key you can reverse that arrow and then again this will select this edge so in this way also we can use a boundary command okay instead of going for a multiple extract okay so this way we can use boundary and extract option so suppose if you want to extend this edge by some limit that is by 15 mm so in that case you can use this extrapolate option so i will choose this extrapolate option again in a boundary i will select this edge so this edge will be extended extrapolated i will select this surface so this edge of this surface will be extended by some limit so we can choose a limit and i will select an okay so in this way we can extend any of the surface along a given direction okay so this is how an extrapolate command will work 
then suppose if I create a extract of this edge and I will create an extrusion of this along y direction and I will hide this edge okay and suppose this surface is my different surface this surface is my different surface and I want to combine these two surfaces so that in the in that corner we can use a fillet command because fillet command won't work for a single edge it have to have a two different surfaces okay so in that case we can use join command that is available inside a operation toolbar so I will choose this join command and I will select these two surfaces so in element to join I will select these two surfaces and I will choose ok button so if you select this join command you can observe that both the surfaces are connected together if you select this extrude one it will again select a single single surface okay and then if you want to create a fillet that is edge fillet then again we are going into this start shape and generative shape design so in generative shape design in operation tab we do have an option called as edge fillet okay so there are other options that are available we will be seeing those options in a later part of our videos in current video we are only using this edge fillet option so I will select this edge fillet and I will select the edge between the two geometries and I will select ok so it will create a fillet of 5 mm between the two geometries suppose if you won't join the two surface then what will happen then it will not select the edge of any of the surface so in that case we need to use a bi-tangent fillet that is available here that is shape fillet so in shape fillet we need to select a bi-tangent fillet and for support 1 I will select this surface and for support 2 I will select this surface ok so fillet will be created in this direction and the fillet should be in upward direction so we need to change the arrow indicator in upward direction so that this there will be fillet created between the two geometries and I will choose ok button so my fillet radius is smaller so I will change the fillet radius to 10 mm so instead of joining these two we can again use a shape fillet option ok friends that's all about today's video in the next part we will be seeing a further option that are available inside wireframe toolbar Thank you. Hi friends, this is Ranjit. Welcome back to our course on surface design by using Katia software. So in today's session, we will be drawing this object. So the basic sketch has given like this and the 3D will look like this one. Okay, so I will just go and start a new drawing. Okay then we were drawing first this part okay so the side view of this part is this one so we will be drawing this portion first and the axis of rotation will be this one so we will be using a revolve command so i will just show you the sketch that we are going to draw so this is how we will be drawing our sketch and there will be fillet at this edge and there will be fillet at this edge okay and the radius will be 15 and 20 respectively so the radius at this location will be 50 and at this location will be 20 the total distance between this to this that they have given it as a 150 height will be 50 and 100 respectively so this is our 50 and this is our 100 they have mentioned it as a radius that's why we are taking directly those values if they have mentioned it as diameter will be 100 then at that time we will take this dimension as a half and this dimension is a 150 okay so let's just draw the part in a side view so i will just use a sketch up and i will choose this plane and we will draw firstly an axis about which we are going to rotate our geometry 
and I will draw the basic sketch. The first thing is we have to make these two vertical line symmetric about this line. Then we are going to specify the distance between these two lines as 150 mm and the height of this line will be as a 50 and height of this line as a 100 and after that we will use fillet between these two edges and the fillet between these two edges. So this radius is of 20, this radius is of 50 and I will just exit the sketcher and I will use revolve command, sorry. So our sketch gets rotated in a one direction only and the sketch will be at this edge. So instead of that, I will choose 90 degree clockwise rotation and 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation so that our sketch comes at a center of this surface. So this is our base object. Then the second step will be to draw this portion. Okay, and the dimension that they have mentioned for this. So there will be an axis line like this. And this sketch is at a 75 mm from this edge. Then diameter at this location is 36. That means radius will be 18. So that this distance will be 18. Then angle they have given it as a 10 degree. So our axis of rotation will be this vertical one. Then we will be drawing this profile. Then this line is of 18 mm. This angle is of 10 degree. And the total height will be 150. That they have mentioned it in here. Sorry, in here. Okay. So I will again go and select a sketcher. Select the side plane. And I will draw firstly an axis of rotation. Then the second thing that we are going to draw is to profile. The profile look like this one. And I will specify the dimensions. So this line is of 18 mm, sorry, 18. Then this height is 150 mm. And the angle between these two lines will be 10 degrees. So this angle is of 10 degree and I will just exit the sketch. So before that remember there is one fillet at this location and the radius of fillet is 5 mm. So I will again go and edit this sketch and I will specify the fillet between these two lines as a 5 mm. And I will just exit the sketch. Then I will use revolve command and I will rotate the sketch by 360 degree or you can specify it as a 180 on a clockwise 180 on anti clockwise direction. So I will just hide those sketches. Okay. Then we need to trim out this portion and also trim out this surface. So for that we will be using trim option instead of split option I will specify this surface and this surface so now you can observe that both of these surfaces will be removed similarly now we need to draw a side two flanges so I will just delete this portion and we need to draw this portion sorry this and this portion okay so in the top view this is our portion okay and in front view they have specified the dimension it has a in terms of radius so we'll just delete this portion 
I'll specify I will highlight this radius. So one radius is of 20, one radius is of 40, and the distance will be 150. Okay. <clears throat> so I will just use sketcher, specify the plane. And I will specify this height as a and this height. Then we will see the radius at this location is of 4 mm. So we will specify 2 into R4. That means radius at these two edges at these two edges will be of 4 mm. So the distance between these two lines is 150. Then height of this line is 20 and height of this line will be 40 and we just specify the fillet between these two lines as a 4M. And I will specify exit and I will choose again revolve command. Again, we will specify it as a 90 degree, 90 degree on each direction. I think we forgot to mention the rotation axis. So in this case, our rotation axis is this direction. So we can specify the rotation direction by selecting this axis or by choosing Y axis. Okay. And okay. We need similar portion on this side also. So we can use a symmetry option. So this option is available in a operation step and in operation step in transformations it is symmetry. So I will select the symmetry option. I will specify the reference plane about which I want a symmetry. We want both of these surfaces. So I will not select hide and show initial element. So if we select this option then our first element will be hidden. So I will just choose OK. Then again I will hide this sketch. Then we need to trim out the unnecessary portion between this surface and this surface. So again we will choose trim. Select the two surfaces. Again we choose trim. This surface and this surface. And okay. And the last part is to create a fillet at these edges. So for creating fillet, we need to go into start, shape and generative shape design. And in generative shape design, there is an option called as edge fillet in operation tab. So I will select this edge fillet. Radius at these edges will be of radius 15. And 2 into R15 means radius at this location and radius at this location will be of 15 mm. So I will choose this edge. And this is and the radius will be 15 mm. And similarly, radius at this top portion has specified it as a radius 5 mm. So I will again go and select edge fillet, select the edge and specify the fillet radius as a fan. So I will just hide these portions so, so this is our object loop and after application of material we will choose a material select the body and i will specify apply material and we will press ok and i will choose this render option and this is how our final object will look like okay so after creating that we can specify the thickness to this surface by going into part design workbench okay so for that i will just go select mechanical design part design workbench so in part design there is an option called as thick surface so that option is available in the surfaces tab and i will specify the object reverse the direction and specify 2 mm as a thickness. 
so after application of thickness our board will look like this okay so that's all about this session so in next section we will be drawing some more complex object by using surface design workbench thank you friends hi friends this is ranjit welcome back to our course on surface design by using katia so in today's session we will be drawing this object so this is our front view this is our right view and this one is our isometric view so remember the thickness for this part they have given it as a 2 mm so that they have specified it in here and after creating a surface we will be applying the thickness by going into part design workbench so forget about this thickness currently so the first thing is that we are going to draw this portion okay and the radius will be 20 and 40 respectively angle made by this line with respect to horizontal will be 30 degree this horizontal distance is of 59 mm and the vertical height will be of 50 mm so let's draw this basic sketch so i will use the sketcher workbench i will draw one horizontal line like this then some inclined line and then vertical line okay then the specified dimension for this line is 50 mm this to this is a 59 angle made by this line with respect to this line and there will be fillet between these two lines and the fillet between these two lines so radius at this location is of 20 radius at this location is of 40 then the distance of this line they have specified it as a 30.5 okay then this distance they have given it as a 50 this distance they have given it as a 59 and this angle is 30.5 so the over sketch will look like this okay and the dimensions will be like this one okay then i will just exit the sketch we will choose extrude command so i think in the sketch there are some intersecting line so just we go and see the lines so this is a perfectly open curvature I think there is okay so there is a problem between these two lines i think this is just because the dimension of this line is 30.5 before fillet and we have given this dimension after fillet so i will just change my sketch i will go in sketcher workbench again specify this plane okay and we will specify this dimension as a 30.5 and the angle will be 30 with respect to horizontal line then this to this side they have given it as a 50 and then this to this they have given it as a 59 okay after that we need to specify the fillet at this location and the radius of this fillet is 20 so they have given this 30.5 like this way okay in earlier case we have given this distance after creating a fillet as a 30.5 okay then the next thing is to specify the radius at this location and the radius will be 40 and now you can observe that there won't be any intersecting lines so you need to check your dimension if there is a, any problem then you can use an extrude i will select this sketch so instead of using extrude on a one side i will choose mirror extend option so that 
this 20 mm gets reflected as a 20 mm on this side and 20 mm on this side so let's check what is the dimension in our sketch so extrusion dimension is of 70 mm okay so we will specify it as a 35 mm on either side and we will hide our sketch okay so this is our first part then the next part will be to create this portion okay and the dimensions will be radius 25 angle between these two lines is a 49 degree and radius at this location is of 5 mm okay so let's go and select this plane for sketch and we will draw some circle at this location which is of radius 25 so the diameter will be 50 then what are the other dimension that they have given okay so the we need to draw a line from this to this and one more line tangent to the circle and up to this line okay so before going and specifying the dimension we need to specify these two lines as a symmetric about this line so our dimension 49 will be equally distributed on either side and we will specify the dimension as a 49 then we need to specify that this line should connect to this line okay then let's go and check what are the dimensions missing okay so 49 will be there radius 25 is there and this radius is a 5 mm this radius is of 5 mm and there is some dimension on either side so let's calculate this dimension so they have given it as a 70 mm total dimension they have specified this radius as a 25 mm so the distance from this line to this line will be 25 mm so we will just specify this line coincident with this line okay so they, they have given the center point at this location that's why we have taken this center point on this line and then we need to specify this line to be intersecting this line okay then what are the other dimensions we need to make these two lines tangency so this line is already tangent one and we need to trim out the remaining portion so i will just use eraser button okay so this is our second sketch and we will just use the extrusion for this sketch and this extrusion will be on only one side that is in this direction and we'll specify this dimension as 100 or 50 so any dimensions okay so our sketch will look like this and after that we need to trim the remaining portion for that we need to use a trim option this surface and this surface so we need to delete this portion and we need to keep this portion for that we have selected extrude 2 this is extrude 2 and this is extrude 1 so we want other side of extrude 1 so we have selected extrude 1 after extrude 2 so we need to use this other side option and we will specify ok and we need to hide our sketch ok so this is how our object will look like then the third portion is to cut out this portion so this portion in a side view will look like this way ok and the radius will be 15 distance will be 20 height will be 29 so we will draw sketch on this plane and we need to draw a circle which is of radius 50 that means diameter will be 30 this to this 
distance they have given it as a 29 and this to this distance they have specified it as a 20 so we will just specify this as a 20 mm and we will just exit the sketch we will extrude the sketch on either side and 50 mm okay and we need to delete internal portion but we don't want to keep this surface so for that we will be using a split command so we will be splitting our main body by using this cylindrical object okay so the first thing is element to cut so which element we have to cut this element and the cutting element will be this cylindrical object and i will specify okay okay and after hiding this extrude one we will get our object okay and after that the next step is to specify the radius at this location so we will just go into shape generative shape design workbench and there is an option called as edge fillet we'll specify this edge and the radius will be the radius at this location they have given it as a okay i think they have they haven't mentioned the radius at this location so we will okay so they have given this radius as a 5 mm at this so we will specify this radius as a 5 mm okay so this is how our object will look like we need to hide this remember in the surface design this surface has not any weight because they haven't specified we haven't specified the thickness for this surface and also for this surface which is hidden surface okay so unless and until we specify the thickness there won't be any volume there won't be any weight for that part so in order to specify the thickness we will just go into selecting part design workbench and there is an option called as thick and sur thick surface we will select this surface we need to change this arrow direction in inward direction because they have given the thickness in a inner direction and specify thickness as a 2 mm and after specifying the thickness you can see that our object will look like this okay so it is difficult to design this part using part design workbench yes it is possible but it will take number of operations to create an object like this so instead of creating those part using part design workbench we will be creating easily with the help of surface design technique okay and the next step is to specify the material for a given object to specify the material we need to use this apply material tab we can specify any material we want so i will select this part apply and okay and after application of material i will just specify fit to view perfect isometric orientation and after that we can specify a render tool so this is how our finished object will look like that's all about this session thank you friends hi friends this is anjit so welcome back to our course on surface design using katia so in today's session we will be drawing this part so this is a mounting bracket so basically we are going to create this cage first and this portion and we will be extruding this portion by 80 so after that we will be creating this flange and this flange okay so let's just draw this sketch so the basic dimension that we are going to use for this sketch is angle 50 angle 150 then this height then this horizontal distance that is 135 and the top edge that is 150 so i will just go into katia surface design workbench then i will select xz plane and i will draw the basic sketch so 
proto state is like this and then we will specify the dimensions so they have given this angle they have given angle between these two lines then they have given the height of this line from the base then they have given this from this base distance of this point from this location again mm, yeah, they have given this radius as a 25 and they have specified some other dimensions or not let's see so this height is 90 and the total height is 150 so we will just specify this this as a 90 and this as a 150 then angle at this location is 50 and angle at this location is 150 okay and this total distance they have given it as a 135 so this total distance is 135 okay so let's see what are the remaining dimensions so they have given the height of this point as 112 so we will specify the dimension of this point from this line as 112 okay and then we specify the fillets between these two lines so the fillet radius is a 25 mm between these two lines and the radius at this location is similar to radius 25 so we will specify again a fillet between these two lines as a 25 so they have not mentioned this radius so i have assumed it as a 25 so our sketch is fully defined so let's just exit the sketch then i will extrude this sketch so the total length is 80 mm but i am extruding this sketch by amount 50 on other side so the total distance is 100 mm so i will tell you why i am taking this 10 mm extra on either side i will just hide this portion then the next thing that we are going to draw is this flange okay and now you can observe in a side view that the angle they have given in between these two flanges is a 12 mm so the flange is not a straight one like this this is gets tilted like this and the angle with the center will be 6 degree on this side and 6 degree on this side so there is another flange and the angle is 6 degree on this side so the total angle is 12 degree okay and other dimension that they have given it as a it should matches this surface from where we have taken the dimension 150 mm okay and they have specified the 12 degree angle and the distance is 80 mm and the fillets will be of 24 and 12 so that fillets we will be given afterwards so i will just go and select this front plane i will choose the sketcher workbench and i will draw an inclined line like this and this line should make an angle of 6 degree and this point should be coincident to this line and the distance of this line from the center will be 40 and I will specify exit so I will extrude this sketch and this time we will extrude it in one direction only and the length of extrusion is total 135 so I will just extrude it by 135 okay and I will hide this sketch similarly we want one more sketch on other side so we will use symmetry option in operation tab so I will choose symmetry I will specify this element to be symmetry or mirror about this plane okay okay and now we can use trim option to trim the extra portion between these two surfaces so we will get cut section like this okay 
and I will specify OK. And similarly, we can specify the trim between these two surfaces. So I will select this trim. I will select this surface and this surface. We will choose other side and I will specify OK. So in this way, we have made our basic sketch. Okay. Remember, we need to bring that sketch till this face. So I have forgotten to make this point coincident to this edge. So we will make this now. So automatically the changes gets reflected in both the surfaces. Then the next portion is to cut this portion. So I will just show you the cut section or the sketch that we need to draw for cutting. So this portion we need to draw. Okay, and the dimension for this they have given it as a height 56 height then the angle is 55 degree and the fillet radius will be 40 mm okay so similarly that we are going to create a sketch on a center plane because if if we draw a sketch on this plane then our extrusion will be perpendicular to this surface but we want extruded surface to be perpendicular to this plane so that's why we have selected this plane and I will draw the sketch like this. Okay, and then I will make this point coincident to this point. Then the angle made by this line with respect to horizontal line, they have specified it as a 50 degree. So I will check. Uh, 55 degree so I will make this angle as a 55 okay then height of this will be 56 mm this point so I will specify this height of this line with respect to this line is 55 okay and one more thing they have given the angle 20 degree between this line and the vertical line okay so we will specify the angle between this line and this line and the angle is 20 degree okay and we will create a fillet between the two lines and the fillet is of radius 40 So we will specify the fillet radius as a 40 mm and I will specify exit. Then we are going to extrude this sketch on either side. So I will choose mirror extent. Then we are going to split our main surface with this extruded surface. So I will use trim option. Sorry, I will use split option because we want only one surface to be cut. So I will select split option and the element to cut will be this surface and cutting element will be this and we will just hide this surface okay and we will hide also this sketch so this is our basic sketch then the next thing is to create fillet between these two surfaces so for creating fillet we need to go select shape and generative shape design workbench and in generative shape design workbench in operation tab we will get this edge fillet and the fillet radius this fillet we are going to give and the fillet radius will be 24 so we will specify the specify this edge and this edge and the radius will be 24 Okay, let's just see whether we have given the right direction dimensions or not. Sorry, so the radius at this location is 12. So I will just recollect this. Okay, let's see. So the outer radius is 24 mm, this radius, and the inner radius they have given it as a 12. Okay, so there is a small arrow at this and at this location. So we will just change the radius. 
or fill it to 12 mm okay so then the next portion will be to draw this side flange which goes over a complete boundary okay so for that we can use boundary command and i will select this surface and the boundary between this end point to this end point and the direction is reverse so we will just zoom it at this location okay so we need to just see whether that arrow is there or not yes so there is an arrow so we need to just flip this arrow so these two points are limits point and we need to create a boundary between these two edges okay and then i will create one sketch radius at this location 6 mm but they haven't specified this horizontal distance so i will assume this distance as a 10 mm or 12 mm okay so they have they have not mentioned this dimension so we are going to assume that dimension and i will create one plane at this starting point and i will choose this plane and i will go in sketch toolbar and we will draw this horizontal line and the dimension of this line is 12 mm okay and this point should be coincident with this point and i will just exit the sketch and we can go and select sweep this is our profile and this is our guide tool and i will choose okay so i will just hide this sketch and i will hide this boundary okay now we need to join these two surfaces to form a single surface so for that there is an option called as join in operation tab i will select this surface and i will select this surface and i will choose okay okay after joining these two surface i will go and create a fillet at this edge so i will select this edge and i will select this edge and the radius of fillet is 30 mm okay then we need to create a fillet between these two surfaces is of radius 6 mm so i will select this and the fillet radius is 6 mm okay and now we are going to do the cut out portions so i will just go and select the sketch and we are going to draw two circles one circle at this location and one other circle is at this location and they have specified the dimension that is radius 14 and the radius of this circle they haven't mentioned and the height is 34 mm and is there any any, any other dimension they have just mentioned they have just mentioned this height as a 34 mm and this point as a 95 mm and the height is 69 mm so i will specify the radius of this circle as a 40 sorry the radius is 14 so diameter is 28 and the diameter is 28 and they have specified the vertical distance and horizontal distance of center point of this circle similarly they have specified the horizontal distance and the distance between these two circle and they have mentioned the horizontal distance so we will be switching and selecting horizontal distance so the height is 34 and 69 and the distance between these two is 24 so this 34 this height is 69 and the distance between these two circle is 24 and i will just choose the exit button we will extrude these two circles and we will select this split option 
and we are going to split this surface by using these two surfaces and ok and now we are going to hide this portion sorry we are going to hide this extra and I will hide this HS also so this is how our final object will look like I will hide just all the planes okay and afterwards last operation is to specify the thickness and they have specified the thickness as a 12 mm so again we can go into part design workbench so I will just keep this portion and I will specify the material so we will select this painting I will select this part and apply the material and I will just go in render that part and I will choose isometric view so I will go in view toolbar so there is isometric option in a view toolbar and just click on this camera button so that's all about this session thank you friends hi friends this is Ranjit welcome back to our course on Katia surface design so in today's session we will be drawing this part so we will use this section first like this and we will revolve this body or this sketch about this axis okay remember the thickness for this part is 2 mm so we will be defining the thickness at the last stage and this thickness has been shown by means of this hatching lines okay so this portion that we are going to draw it in a second step so that's why i haven't taken this portion okay so let's just go into sketcher toolbar okay remember i will draw this circle first which is of radius 7 then i will draw this circle which is of radius 5 okay and the center point will be at a distance of 85 by 2 from the center axis because they have given the dimension in terms of diameter okay so i will just draw a circle then this to this distance they have given it as a 785 divided by 2 85 divided sorry 85 divided by 2 okay and the diameter will be 14 because they have mentioned the radius then there is a straight line at this location and the length of this straight line will be 20 from the end point so the distance from the center point will be 20 minus 7 so I will just make sure that this circle should tangent to this portion so this circle and this line tangency then I will draw one vertical line and the length of this line is 14 that is sorry 20 minus 7 so it will be 13 then I will draw one circle and then again the radius of circle will be 5 so the diameter will be 10 then the height of this circle from this line so height will be 50 diameter so it will be 25 and the distance from this point this this end point to this end point is 100 minus this distance that is 5 mm because they have mentioned the radius 
so this distance will be 25 then distance between this point and this point is 100 minus 5 because they have mentioned the distance between this point and this tangent point as a hundred so we need to reduce the dimension by 5 mm because we are giving the dimension from center point to this end point then again there is one straight line and the length so i will just delete this portion so you can observe that this line is of 20 mm from this horizontal line that is axis line okay so we will draw one line tangent to this circle and the end point should be at a distance of 20 mm from the horizontal line okay we have to make this line as a vertical okay then the next portion is to draw a line from this location sorry from this point to this point and then from this point to this end point okay and they have mentioned the distance of this point that is this point from the center line is 35 this is half of this 70 mm diameter so we will just specify this dimension at the 35 we will make this line as a vertical line okay and then we will delete the unwanted portion so i will delete this portion delete this portion and we have to specify the radius so the radius will be 4 into r5 that means at a 4 corner there is a radius of 5 mm so this is 5 mm this is 5 mm this is 5 mm and this is 5 mm okay so i will just exit this sketch and i will make revolve using this sketch and my revolution axis will be y axis you can see that y axis orientation is like this and i will make this angle as a 360 degree sorry 180 degree and we should make this angle 90 degree in one direction and 90 degree in another direction and i will make this sketch as a hidden so this is our first part then we are going to draw this portion so take a look at these dimensions so i will just delete these unwanted entities okay so we need to create multi section between these two surfaces so this is our first section and there will be another section at this location okay and we need to draw these two sections and we will remove this unwanted portion so the dimension for the topmost rectangle is so this is 15 and this is 30 so this is 30 for topmost part and this is 50 and there is one more rectangle and the dimension of this rectangle is 20 by 35 okay so i will just go at this location on this plane i will draw one rectangle this rectangle should be symmetric allow symmetry about this line then the distance this distance is 35 and this distance is 20 okay and they have specified this edge that is most bottom most edge from the end point is at a distance of 37 so so the distance from this end point to this point it is 37 okay again we need to draw one more section and the height of this section will be 40 mm 
so i will make a one plane which is offset from this base plane by 40 mm and again i will go and create a sketch and i will make one more rectangle at this location and we will just draw this section as a 30 mm this section as a 15 mm and we will make these two lines symmetric about this line okay and this distance from this end point they have given it as a 40 and i will exit the sketch then we need to draw this two section by means of multi section surface command so this is our first section this is our second section remember we need to make this closing point in a one line and we need to connect by means of vertices so i will select first section point first then second section point again first section point second section point first section point second section point this point and this point okay and we will go and select a ratio and okay okay then we will be filling this portion we will hide this sketch we will make a join between this top face and this face and then we go we are going to trim this unwanted portion so this portion so i will select this surface and this surface automatically this portion will get trimmed and i will just hide this sketch and i will make a fillet that is edge fillet so i will just select the vertical faces okay and the radius of this vertical faces is this vertical faces they have mentioned it as a sorry uh, i think they have mentioned the fillet radius okay they haven't mentioned the fillet radius at this vertical edges okay so we need to check whether they have mentioned it any okay so they have mentioned it as 6 into r2 that means this four vertical edges and one horizontal edge and one horizontal edge so the radius will be 2 mm for vertical edges and we are going to use this edge fillet and edge fillet between this top surface okay so this is our half portion then the next part is to delete the elliptical arc or cut this portion so they have mentioned the dimension as r5 and r10 that means the ellipse will be like this okay and the center point will be here somewhere here and this distance is 10 mm and this horizontal distance is 5 mm so i will just draw the ellipse by using sketch on this plane i will draw ellipse i will select the point okay and we will be specifying the major radius as a 5 tap minor radius as a 10 tap and angle of rotation will be equal. okay so in our case we want it in a horizontal direction so i will rotate it by 90 degree and i will make sure that this point lies on this edge and the distance of this point from this edge will be that they have given it so sorry they have given the distance between these two points that is 60 so instead of giving this dimension i will just delete this dimension and i will specify the dimension between this point and this point this line and this dimension they have given it as a 30 so 30 at this location and 30 at this location so i will exit the sketch i will extrude the sketch and sorry we need to extrude the sketch 
and the extrusion dimension will be 50 m and i will just make a symmetry line of this gauge so i will select this gauge and the reference plane will be this one and okay and we will trim out the remaining portion so i will select this portion and this portion we need to reverse the sketch okay similarly trim between these two bodies and select the other side for this part okay and we need to create a fillet at this location so let's check what is the fillet radius so they haven't mentioned the fillet radius at this location so let's just assume it as a 2 mm okay and afterwards we can specify the thickness for this part i will hide the unnecessary planes i will hide this sketch and again you can specify the material for this part and you can render the given part okay so try to complete the model like this okay so that's all about this session thank you friends hi friends welcome back to our youtube channel paradigm cad academy so in today's session we will be creating this a simple basketball using katia v5 so you can use any 3d modeling software like katia solidworks creo nscad and so on so i will create a new file and i will name this file as a basketball or i will keep this as a part file i will name it as a basketball then i will create one spherical object so i will go into the sphere option for center i will specify center at a origin and i will specify sphere radius as equal to 200 mm so we have created a partial sphere i will change it to a full sphere so we just need to adjust our lighting to see object properly okay then i will create one more circular object so in this way we can use a circle option and for this one i will specify center at a 200 220 mm so it is somewhere around this location and is supported by this plane and the radius will be suppose 180 mm and i will specify it as a whole circle and i will simply press ok then i will extrude this circle along y direction and i will specify the dimension is a 250 mm on either side and i will hide this circle and i will compute the intersection between this surface and this surface and i will hide this geometry okay then we will be using sweep option so for a sweep i will specify radius as equal to 5 mm so we will hide this intersection and we will go into this model tree and i will copy this sweep and i will mirror it using symmetry command along this plane okay and then we will be creating a trim operation between these two object okay similarly we can create a trim between these two surfaces again we will compute intersection between this plane and this surface object and again we will use sweep operation again we can hide this sketch and we will use trim operation between these two bodies okay then i will create one more circular object 
and for that I will keep a center at a origin and rate and support will be this one and radius will be 200 and I will again use a sweep operation and I will again hide this object and I will use trim operation between this and this body okay if you want you can hide those planes you can create a multiple extract in order to specify different material for a surface body surfaces okay and I will press ok and if you want to assign a color to this object then I will select trim 4 and I will assign a red color and for this object I will assign a black color and if you want to render that object you can use this camera key and you can use the center option so this is how you can create basketball using simple operations like sweep intersection and trim command subscribe to our youtube channel paradigm cad academy or like us on instagram page paradigm cad academy for more such videos thank you friends So in today's session, we will be creating this component. So this is a cover plate used in automotive design. So we will be creating this by using Katia software. So we will be using generative shape design and wireframe and, wireframe and surface design workbench for creating this object. So for creating this object, I have created one geometrical set and this geometrical set consists of multiple sketches. So let's see these sketches one by one. So I have created first sketch which is of radius equal to 190 and distance between these two points I have given this dimension randomly because we will be trimming this object afterwards. So this dimension is taken. So it is here. So the radius will be 190 mm. Okay. And my coordinate system will be here okay so this is my first sketch for a second sketch I have created second sketch which is perpendicular to my previously created sketch and the orientation or basic sketch will be like this one okay and my third sketch will be an arc like this one and the radius will be 170 mm and for creating that sketch I have used this distance 60 mm for plane offset plane so this is my first sketch this is my second sketch so this is like 5 degree tape angle then 20 radius then 260 radius and so on and my third sketch for creating third sketch I have created one plane which is parallel to my base plane and I have created this sketch and the radius of this sketch will be 170 mm and I have given this dimension in order to make this sketch fully defined. So after creating these three sketches, I will create one geometrical set and I will name this geometrical set as a surface. So it will be a good practice to define geometrical set. So if some modifications are required in your drawing, then you can easily identify a base sketches and base surface geometry and solid geometries so in this case I will use this sketch as my profile sketch and these two are my guide curve so I will use sweep command and in sweep I will use with two guide curves option and for profile I will select this as my profile and for guide curve I will select this as my first guide curve and this as my second guide curve and I will simply press ok button Okay, so it will create 
a surface okay then we have to limit this surface by using this curve so one curve is given like this one okay and the radius of this curve will be 400 and the distance from a center line will be equal to 40 mm so i have created one more sketch that is sketch number 5 i think no so i think it will be sketch number 7 so i have created a sketch number 7 40 mm 40 mm distance and arc if of radius equal to 400 then i will extrude this sketch in upward direction by some dimension and i will reflect this sketch on other side by using symmetry command then i will trim the necessary portion by using trim command so for trim command i will select multiple object so i will create a sketch like this uh, surface like this one and this is my second surface okay then for this surface there is one opening like this one and the basic dimensions required for this are given like radius is equal to 60 the distance from the ground will be 12 mm then radius of this arc will be 15 and the distance will be 16 then radius of this arc will be 40 so i have already created this sketch as my sketch number 5 I will double click on this sketch so you can observe that distance will be 36 then this distance will be 12 mm then this distance this radius will be 15 then this radius will be 16 and so on then I will extrude this by suppose 100 mm on both sides so for both sides, I will select this mirror extend option. Okay. And then I will use split command. Because I want to only cut this surface by using this surface. So this bottom most portion will be deleted and I will hide this sketch. So this is my basic geometry. Then there will be some pointing points like this one. So the dimension for this one will be given like here that is radius of this will be radius is equal to 7.5 and the distance from this end will be of 18 mm. So I have created another sketch that is sketch number 6 and the radius of this arc will be 7.5 distance from one end will be 18 mm and the height will be 7. Again, I will extrude this. So, in this case, I will extrude it in one direction only. And I will press OK. So, the distance of extrusion will be, so the total distance given will be 96 mm. So, from center it will be around 48 mm. So, I will extrude it by 48 mm. Okay, then I don't want this portion and I also don't want this portion. So in order to do that, I will use trim command. I will select this surface and this surface. And I will select the necessary portion to get. Okay, so before doing that, we have to just copy this extrusion. So I will mirror it along this plane. Okay, so it is a part of a trim operation. So I will see simply use copy paste and I will make this symmetric about this plane. Okay, and I will use hide and show initial element. Okay. So I will hide the sketch and I will again use this trim option this is trim geometry okay so in this way we can create 
okay so if you don't want these sketches to be seen then you can simply click on this geometrical set and hide that geometrical set okay so basic surface geometry will be created like this one then there will be some cutout so there is one cutout like this one and the dimension of the same will be given like this one so it will be uh, distance from this end will be 35 mm and end to end distance is 7.9 okay so i will clear some dimensions over here uh, sketch lines over here and we have to make this sketch so the distance between center to center is 7.9 radius of this arc will be 10 and distance from this end will be 35 so i will again select my base plane so i will activate this sketches option by using define in work object i will select this as my base plane and i will create a geometry like this one sorry so i will use elongated hole Okay, and I will make this geometry coincident to this sketch. Then I will specify radius of this will be 10 mm, and the distance of this end from the center line will be given as 35 mm. Okay, and the distance between these two is given as a 7.9 mm. Okay, and I will simply exit this sketch. I can project this sketch. I can also create an extrusion and I can make split operation. So you can use multiple operation for creating a single object. So I will use element to cut as this one and cutting element as this one. And I will hide the sketch. Okay, so in this way we can create an opening. Okay, and again I will so I forget to change the geometrical set. Okay, so I will again hide this geometrical set. Okay, then the remaining portion will be fillets. So I will create so I will create first fillet of this one that is radius is equal to 20 mm. So for that I will use edge fillet and I will select this edge and this edge and the radius of both will be 20 mm then there will be a variable radius fillet so radius at this end will be 5 mm radius at this end will be 10 mm and again radius at this end will be 5 mm so for that I will use variable radius fillet so I will select variable radius fillet I will select this edge so fillet radius will be total of 5 mm and I will select multiple points so I will select this point will keep radius at this point will be 5 mm radius at this point I will keep this radius as a 10 mm again I will select this edge and radius at this end will be again 10 mm and I will again select this same and radius at this end will be 5 mm and radius at this end will be 5 mm so we can use variable radius fillet to give variable radius at different end ok then there will be some fillet provided at this location so the radius I think it is not given in the sketch let's see whether it is given or not so they have not mentioned the radius at this location so we can assume radius at this location as a 2mm or 3mm if it is given it no so we have to remove all the sharp edges so I will use edge fillet and I will select this edge and I will specify it as a 2mm let's see whether it can take yes it will take so I will select this edge also okay so in this way we can create a basic geometry 
and after that only one operation remaining that is we need to define a cut at this location which is of 5 mm 5 degrees sorry so it is mentioned in here so it is mentioned in here that is taper will be of 5 degree so we can use taper operation after solidification or we can simply create a sketch and cut that part with this sketch so i will select a create a one line so if it it is up to you which operation you want to use so i will specify this degree as a 5 degree and i will make this point coincident to this end okay then i will extrude this sketch like this way we can make symmetrical copy of this about this plane at this location and we can simply use split command so in this case i have to split this object by using this and i will place other side and i will hide the sketch similarly i will use element to cut at this one and cutting element as this one other side and okay and i will hide the sketch so in this way so again you have to make this sketch into another geometrical set so let's see whether we can change the geometrical set to sketches yes before so i will select there is no option like after so we'll select this one okay so it will transfer this sketch into another geometrical set and that's all so we have to specify thickness as a 3m so i will change this fillet radius to suppose 4mm or 5mm okay and then i will add one body and i will specify the thickness for this part by going into part design workbench and click on option i will select this object and the thickness is given as a 3mm so i think there is some problem at this location so we just need to specify radius properly at this location so i'll change and make it as a 3mm and i will see whether it will accept the thickness or not okay and then we can hide this body sorry so i will hide this body and this is an over object Okay, so in this way we can create a complex surface modeling so if you are really interested in learning this tool that is katia and create such a complex object then you can visit us at our hadapsa center that is paradigm cad academy at hadapsa or you can simply call on my number so i will specify my number on my youtube channel so you can if you want to have define a material for this object you can specify the material so i will use any color and you can see this color by activating this material tab okay and if you want to render this you can use this camera and you can simply press on this render button so it will create a render image of this object so subscribe to our youtube channel if you want to see some amazing object by using katia software thank you friends